Hi, my name is Lionel Jackson. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, around the east side of Detroit, around the Seven Mile area. And I'm currently the youngest African American with a successful talk show that has already been on TV. Some of my statistics list over 750,000 viewers, receiving over 66 YouTube honors, best honors being number one, most viewed in Germany. Number two, most viewed in Ireland, Israel, and France. Number four, most viewed in the United Kingdom. Number six, most viewed in the Netherlands. Number ten, most viewed in Poland. Number nine, most viewed in the education field, and that's on the entire site of YouTube. Number 44, in travel and events on YouTube, and that's on the entire site as well. And number 87, most viewed how to and style on the entire site of YouTube. Not to mention... Number 44, most responded, science and technology, on the whole site of YouTube. I have fans in over 20 countries, and the show is currently watched and translated in over 10 different languages. Now, I'm not saying this to brag, but I'm saying this to brag upon you to let you know that if I can do it, coming from humble beginnings, then you can definitely do it. And I'm still not there yet. I'm, I, want, I want you all to continue to support me because as I go, the higher I get, the, fu the further I will uh, take my audience. So thank you very much, and um, I'll see you at the top. Right now, we're on our way to my elementary school. Now, I've went to several different elementary schools, including Grayland and Lynch and... Um, you know, I in elementary school when I got my first 4.0. I was in fourth grade when I got my first 4.0, and I, you know, it's just in God's will. And you know, I, I just worked hard. You know, when I listen to the teacher, if you do what the teacher says, you you uh, obviously it's it's possible to get you to get a 4.0 as well. And um, you know, it was fun, man. I, I remember playing that all the time, man. I think we called it like high go giddy or uh, high go. Tag your it or something like that, but anyways, um, yes, like I said, we're on our way to you know the school, and right now we're at the school. Um, what I want to talk about is my first fight. Now I know this sounds crazy, but my this elementary school is um Fleming Elementary. It's you know my first fight. I don't know my first fight like kind of broke my, broke the ice for me. You know it kind of like made me open up and. You know, not be afraid to fight, you know, and I was always like quiet. So for me to fight, it was everybody was like, whoa, what's going on? Now, keep in mind, I always had nice shoes and I never was the type to argue. So when I finally decided to, you know, uh, go, you know, we went on the playground over here. I'm showing you the playground here. And um, it, it was it was madness, man. I'm telling you, all it was madness. We went over there on the playground and. This one guy decided to wrestle with me, and I got on my new shoes, and I'm mad. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not about to be wrestling with nobody in my new shoes. So he started trying to wrestle, and I got serious. I'm like, no, I got on my new shoes. What is you doing? And then he like, you know, uh, and then we just got the fight, and it was on. <laughs> Our way to, um, to my middle school. Now, I went to a couple different middle schools. I went to Nolan for sixth grade. I went to Cleveland for 7th grade, and I went to Nolan again for 8th grade. Now, let me tell you a funny story about Nolan and its uh, situation. I was, um, of course, I was like 13 going on 14, but this is when, you know, I honestly, y'all, I, I was like a bad student at this time. Like, I would skip school and do all types of crazy stuff, man. It was bad because... I'm like, I know I'm not normally like this, but however it goes, I ended up, you know, um, having to go to summer school to complete uh, the eighth grade. So that that was a big, big, big wake up call for me, y'all. I was like, I, I actually couldn't believe it. Like, dang, you know, and for me to go to summer school, I was like, wow, that showed me a lot uh, getting ready, you know, uh, from it was it was sad, man. But anyways, yeah. So I finished middle school at Nolan. Okay, right now we're on our way to one of the houses we lived in for most of our time uh, while I was uh, getting ready for high school and then going to high school. Um, it was uh, 
a house to remember because it was nothing but you know fights and all types of crazy stuff you know um but you know that's what you get living on the east side of detroit man it was on uh, healy street um and those who knew about that street back then would know but if you didn't i'm gonna give you a little insight on it um right now we're this we're at the house um and this is what it this is where it was you know right here i sold drugs cut hair and babysit at the same time so i was a hustler man i had to get it in somewhere you feel me uh i ain't trying to be you know out there but you know of course i don't do that anymore i don't have to anymore thank god now we're on our way to my high school now let me tell y'all man uh my high school was crazy man i went to you know uh well we're on our way you're gonna see what the, what the school was but Man, I can tell you so many memories, but you know, of course, ninth grade is when you know you're just getting out of middle school. Um, then you going over and fighting start getting tense. Like girls was fighting each other, pulling patches of each other's hair out. It was getting like that, and uh, it was like they was slicing each other with blades and everything. And it's just ninth grade. I haven't even made the tenth grade yet, and that's how they was acting. It was crazy. Um, what else? Uh, you know, you had the gang fights. Uh, people getting shot daily. Um, you know, the gambling and all of that, man. Uh, tenth grade. Tenth grade is when I start. You know, um, actually ninth grade. I had braids. Uh, the beginning of ninth grade. Then I start growing my braids. You know, then you know my braids. Everybody knew me for my braids, and then. The funny thing, funny thing about that is, um, in tenth grade, you know, I started getting like near the end of tenth grade, I started getting tired of my braids because you know everybody started getting them and you know it started being time consuming and honestly braids hurt too. So you know everybody who cut their hair know what I'm talking about, but braids hurt. So that's how you know the that's how my situation was in tenth grade. Now eleventh grade. Uh, when I hit 11th grade, this is when I, I want to say when I start like getting females and all of that good stuff, you know, um, in 11th grade, I had about four girlfriends, you know, um, this is nothing to brag about or nothing, but you know, everything is a learning experience, really. Um, I, I just thank God that, you know, I'm a change man and all of that. But anyways, yeah, I had like five girlfriends, you know different schools <laughs> it was all that but around this time this is when i had like you know um i had all the, all the shoes i wanted you know i had all the jordans and the air force ones you know the stuff that uh 11 graders was getting you know around my neighborhood and stuff like that well the fortunate ones was getting so that was fun uh what else i was i was you know becoming a man this one of course, you know, from my situation in middle school, if you uh, remember what I was saying about how I had to go to summer school and stuff, this kind of gave, this was like my my wake up calling right here at 11th grade because I started getting my grades straight. This is when I started busting like 3.0s and 3.5s and stuff like that. Now in 12th grade, then I went, you know, at the 11th grade and 12th grade, man, 12th grade was a year to remember, man. Uh... This is when, of course, you know, the grades was on point. Then the female, I slowed down with the females. I started having just like one girlfriend at a time and stuff like that. Uh, and then I started focusing on like, you know, because it, it was senior year. You got to get on your grind. So, of course, you know, I had to do the senior pictures and the duels and all the candlelight stuff. And all of that stuff was just adding up so fast. And it was going senior year is like zoom zoom and you got to be on point with that junk senior year actually got me ready for college now anyways um i was nominated for uh you know class brick house i was nominated for class best dress and i was nominated for class quiet and i was nominated for class short i didn't uh, i didn't want to say that but i say it it don't matter it's cool um and and i was the class of uh, 2005 now during this time I actually, I didn't win none of them, but uh, class quiet, but that's okay, you know, I was nominated, a lot of people wasn't even fortunate enough to be nominated, but you have to be somebody to even be nominated, and everybody know what I mean when I say that. 
Then, of course, I went on to college at the University of Detroit Mercy with a double major in performing arts and business administration. And this is where the began. Of course, my show was laughed at, to be honest with y'all, at the beginning. But now it's not laughed at anymore. It all started with a borrowed camera and a Facebook status. I'm going to show you how it began. 2006 as a Facebook status. I know, right? Okay, a Facebook status today is nothing, but it, it grew into a Facebook group. My Facebook status said, The Lionel Show coming soon. The Facebook group said, The Lionel Show. And it became a movement. In December 2006, I created my first YouTube In account. In 2007, I began working on different projects because my major was theater. So I decided to uh, work behind the scenes for a couple stage plays, starting off with You're in Town, uh, Malice of Warthoff, and Polish Joke. I also sponsored some parties. My first party was July. Uh, November 2006, I mean 2007, was incredible. That was The Lionel Show Live, the first live show for The Lionel Show. It was very, very, um, exclusive. It was so great that, that we actually did a, um, a, a The Lionel Show Part 2. Um, December 4th of the same year, 2007, and I was also featured in the Varsity News in the um, event section, so that was great as well. December 25th, 2007, uh, I did another skating party, and it was, um, you know, a Christmas skating party. It was very fun. December 31st, I uh, sponsored an event called Finally Provocative. It was uh, an event done by Finally Famous and, and Provocative Entertainment. Have artists such as Kanye West's artists, uh, Big Sean on there. Um, they had you know local Detroit artists who are on the radio all the time. Uh, PL, uh, Explicit Lyrics, and uh, one that plays on the Giants. It was fun. 2008 was a year that changed my life. January. The Lionel Show Part 3. We called it the prefix. This is when I borrowed Jessica's camera. February 2008. The name changed to The Lionel Show instead of The Lionel Show. I had no claims against The Lionel Show, but I, I decided to keep it original and I wanted it to be 100% pure. When I created the second YouTube account, it created a tremendous buzz. In March 2008, I did a skating event called Ride or Die. Now in April, I did an event called Ride or Die Part 2. But the weekend before Ride or Die Part 2, I got into an accident where I literally almost died. A car accident, that is. I was on the freeway. I was going at least between 60 and 75. A car smacked me from behind. I spin around three times and smashed into the wall. Unfortunately, um, the car got away. It was a hit and run. How do you hit and run on the freeway? I was trying to, trying to figure that out still to this day. But anyways, I end up looking like I had a, a, a neck brace on for several weeks and I end up with uh, zero scars so I thank God for that. In May, because of what happened in April, I decided to do for my show, call it May Madness, where I did shows every single day leading up to my birthday which was May 30th. And yeah, so shows every day. I called it May Madness and I did a countdown of the 20 most successful artists slash musicians at that time. May Madness 2008. If you haven't noticed, several shows have been deleted. But I'm here to tell y'all what the shows were, okay? Number 6 was Jermaine Dupree. Number 9 was Dr. Dre. Number 10 was Madonna. Number 11 was uh, Ludacris. Number 14 was Beyonce. Number 15 
was David Bowie. Number 16 was Queen Latifah. Number 19 was Paul McCartney. And number 20 was Nelly. Recorded live from Indiana. In July, I did another skating party, which was sponsored by The Lionel Show. And it was also great. It was called Is Your Roll. August 2008. Season two began. That is that was a very special moment for me because what the show had become, I was just doing it and it was turning out great. Everything I was doing was becoming success. So November, <laughs> I didn't even wait too much longer. November, I did you know the first live show for season two. My name is Travis Spencer. Uh, if you ever seen the Lionel Show before, you've probably seen me. I'm actually an accounting major here at the University of Detroit Mercy. I'm uh, about to give you the, the 101 on the Lionel Show. I've been working with Lionel since he started the show, well, since I've known the show, which was freshman year. I'm not sure when he started it, but um, it's been a pretty good show. For those who, tend in, who tuned in, you should know. I performed on Seasons 2 Lionel Show. Uh, Fifth Floor Boys, or maybe Men of Business, which you may know us by, if you ever seen us perform. Uh, it was a pretty good performance. We performed a couple songs. We you know we discussed a couple topics, basically what the regular show consists of. In December of 2008, I ended up doing a second live show for season two. In 2009, I continued to do the show live each and every Tuesday at 8 to create anticipation for the third live show, which was technically in total the fifth live show for the show, but the third live show for uh, season two. In April, The Lionel Show hit 500,000 views. May Madness 2009, I did 31 tweets instead of shows. July, TLS Inspired was founded. TLS stands for The Lionel Show. August Passion, I did 31 shows in one month. Never did by any talk show host. And 9909 was one season three. three. Featured on YouTube. So that was 2009, I think. In 2010, in January, I was featured again for my second time on YouTube. That's incredible. Just imagine being featured once, but then again, a second time, that was. Incredible. In February, the debut of The Lionel Show on TV, Channel 61, Type TV. Thank you to CST. Okay. How's everybody doing? Thanks for tuning in to The Lionel Show. You're the number one source for real life situation entertainment. Don't get it twisted, man. Now, I'm on a real life situation. Well, first of all, I want to thank you all for supporting me thus far. You know, I've come a long way, you know. For those who support me from day one, I really appreciate it. For, for the new supporters, I, I appreciate your support as well. Now, my real life situation for today is very serious. A lot of people are taking this for granted just because they see it in the media like it's not really happening. Okay, what's happening is uh, an earthquake has happened in Haiti. Um, you know, thousands of people have... Um, it, it's sad because people are like taking it for granted and not understanding, like, what if this happened to... You know, us over here in the U.S., it would be just as bad, you know. It would be worse, you know, because we wouldn't know how to handle it. Anyway, if you can, man, just donate, you know, whatever you can. It's, it's millions of ways to donate now. Everybody got a way to donate to Haiti right now. You can donate shoes, clothes. You know, in the U.S., we're very fortunate. So you got something to donate. So don't tell me you don't. Um, donate anything you can, you know, to Haiti. Um, I want to give a shout-out to some of, the, some of my celebrity um some of the people I support that celebrities that's, that's doing a good job of uh, donating. Um, Jay-Z, you know, we got, he, he's collaborated with some people and he's donated over um, half a million dollars. You got Paris Hilton who's uh, uh, donated over 250000 Uh Wyclef consistently putting in work for the uh, children in Haiti. Um, you know, it's been great, man. So you know, another real life situation, though, to keep it short and simple about that real life situation. Just, just donate to Haiti if you can. Um, another ca campus organization is one of my severe, severe real life situations because people take those for granted as well. I, my thing is I've been fortunate enough to 
So I'm about to graduate now from, you know, University of Detroit Mercy, and I've been fortunate enough to join at least like, over seven organizations. But I've met some great people, like people that I never thought I would meet in my life. Um, it's been great, man. I've met, like, you know, from brothers all the way up until, like, corporate connect. So, you know, it's important that you join, you know, some, if not one, two, maybe, any, any, you don't have to join seven like me, but join a campus organization. When you go to college, that's what you tell your parents you want to do. Join a, join a campus organization. It's very important. I want to thank you all for supporting me thus far. Um, there's been a lot of things happening with the show, and I want to thank you for, you know, continuing to stick with me. It's been great, man. I'm telling you. Now, um, my real life situation for this show is health and fitness. How important is that to you? I got a couple tips for you all. Um, you can eat fruits and vegetables daily. You can drink lots of water. I mean, me personally, I drink a, at least a liter a day. So we can do, you know, start off like that. That would be a good way to start off. You know, exercise and stretch, all of this stuff is good for you. You should definitely um, take that into consideration. Um, my real life situation for today is going to be self-esteem, okay? I want you ladies to know that just because a guy uh, likes you for you, if he doesn't like you for you, then you shouldn't be with him. I mean, mainly because, you know, some guys can use girls, and girls can use guys as well. Guys, if, a, if you know that a girl is using you for your money, let her go. Just please let her go, because it's not going to work in the future. You know it. Um, I have a, a couple tips for you. Be you. That's the most important thing. If you be yourself, then there's no room or spare or space for um, someone to, you know, try to use you. And test people. Find out who they really are before you commit. I mean, y'all probably watch this and y'all say, "Why does this? Who does this guy think he is? He comes on with glasses and stuff like that." I, I, my glasses equals a celebration to where I came from nothing, guys. I came from nothing. I see what I mean. That. It's simply leads me to my real-life situation. My real-life situation is nobody is perfect. Once you realize that, then you know automatically that you can do something or you can do whatever you want to do in your life. Um, you also have to realize that you are the only you in this, in this universe. Once you realize that, you will then, then begin to share, you know, anything that you have to share with the world. What well, sharing is caring. Once you, any, anytime you share, you're gonna get more of it back. Believe that. People, because people wonder, you know, y'all look at me. I say, you know, he's sharing everything on his blog, and I don't understand why is he so comfortable with that. It's, it's simply because you're the only you. So, you know, no matter, even if someone tries to copy you, you're gonna only, it's only gonna be one you in this universe, and it's no, it's, they're not gonna be you. Period. That's the end of the passage. Keep it real, real short. Now, a couple facts about the show. I have over half a million viewers. I have over 4,000 Facebook fans. Um, and, you know, the stats roll in. You know, we got a couple people. Uh, people are watching the show every week. So I really appreciate that. And it, it means so much to me. Like, it touched my heart. Every time I think about the fact that somebody actually want, wants to hear what I'm saying. So I really appreciate that a lot. For real life situations. I'm going to go ahead and, and keep it rolling. I want to talk about the weather because on the East Coast we have some pretty bad weather going on. Um, we got some snow and everything. I just want to know, does this affect uh, your mood? Do you like the, the weather affect your mood? Do you? I, I know some people who are like kind of snotty or whatever when, when it's bad weather. Like You can ask them what's going on. You can, you can say, how you doing today? And they'll say, the, the weather, who is this weather? I'm like, wow, okay, don't let that affect your mood. Let your mood be what it is. You know, wake up, feel good about the day, whether it's bad weather or not. Um, about this weather, huh? <laughs> I complained about it last week, and I'm not, I, I said I wasn't going to complain about it this week. But what I will do is take you on an adventure, okay? So later on, I'll take you on an adventure. Anyways, my real life situation for today is transportation. What is your transportation? You got different ways. You got uh, cabs. You got bus. You got um, your car. You can, you know, drive with somebody. Uh, carpool. Uh, well, tell me what's your form of transportation. Me personally, I've been able to do them all. You know, from the bus to the cab to the car to the everything. I think the best form of transportation.
situation, to be honest with y'all, and the most economical is a bus. So don't be ashamed to ride the bus, okay? I paid, I think, $3 I had to go to the bank, and I paid $3 to ride the, ride the bus. That's crazy. I was like, wow, this is it? That's like a gallon of gas, okay? <laughs> think about it like, never too good. If you never, never be, act like you're too good for anything, because you never know. Um, I've met some successful people riding the bus, catching cabs. So don't, you don't have to always drive. You don't. I mean, just keep just leave it at that. And I do own a car. While you while you're asking, you know, um, I'm actually 22 years old, <laughs> and I own my second Mercedes Benz. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, I'm, I'm I'm actually looking for a third. So I mean, I'm not saying that's a brag. I'm just saying you're never too good. Like I said, I, was, I just rode the bus to get. I had to go, you know, um, the bank or whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and kick it off. My real life situation for today. Speaking of um. A nice, have a nice weather, a nice day. Um, it's spring wear. Tell me what you think about, you know, um, what's some of the, the best things to wear during spring or what's some things that you shouldn't wear. So do's and don'ts. Tell me what you think some do's and don'ts are for spring wear, okay? Some people would want to wear, you know, boots and it's, I definitely out, you know, don't wear boots or, you know, big winter coats. You shouldn't do. Because without you all, uh, I wouldn't have a show, and that's that's honest, you know, honest, honest to God truth. Okay, um, I'm gonna kick it off. My real life situation for today is animals and their importance to society. Um, a lot of people don't look at animals like uh, a living being, and they are to me, like, and they are really in in real life. Um, everything, like, um, from you know, trees and plants and stuff like that, everything has a purpose. So when you're, you know, being judgmental or you treat animals like anything or um, cutting trees or whatever, just be conscious of, of the fact that that's a, that's a living being and it's placed in the universe just like really you as a human. For today, was inspired by, I want to call her Miss M. She said she doesn't need any credit for this. Um, but my real life situation for today is motivation. There's positive motivation, there's negative motivation. It all depends on how you work with uh, motivation. Like me personally, um, I feed off positive motivation way more than negative uh, motivation. Basically, that's just to keep it short and simple. I want to give another shout out. I didn't do his real life situation, but I want to give a shout out to um, Ehab, uh, that's E-H-A-B. Uh, he said he watches the show and everything. My real life situation for this show is music. How important is music to you in your life? Like, could you live without music? Be honest. Okay, me neither, okay? Because it's, it's sad because it's like, okay, dang, okay, I can't, I can't clean up without music. I can't study without music. That's crazy. I can't, um talk on the phone without music. Like sometimes it's just crazy. Like I don't even understand how, how that works. But anyways, tell me about you, your situation and music, okay? That's my real life situation. And another thing I wanted to point out was my show is about real life situations and entertainment. If you come here to laugh or joke and play around and stuff like that, you're, you're watching the wrong show. I'm here for real life situations and entertainment. Keep that in mind. And comment on my real life situation, which is music. Tell me how important music is. Right now, I just hit over uh, 600,000 viewers. So I'm thanking, thanking God and thanking you all for supporting the show. I really appreciate that a lot, for real. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kick it off. My real life situation for today is skating and skateboarding. My question to you all is, what do you think about, you know, skateboarding and skating? Me, personally, uh, well, not. I don't really skateboard, but I have some special guests in the house that skateboard, and I'll, I'll tell you about them just a little bit later. Um, but skating, when I skate, man, it's something about, when I, when I say skate, I mean roller skating. Um, when I skate, man, it, it takes, it relieves, it relieves stress. Like, I don't think about nothing else, but how bad my legs may hurt because I'm getting older. But um, anyway, it's, um, yeah, so skating is my real, real life situation. Tell me about if you skate, roller blade. Ice skate, whatever you do, tell me about your, you, you and your experience with skating, you were skateboarding. Um, now, my uh, real life situation for today is women and makeup. Okay, 
Yeah, this is for a guy. Um, do, do you like it when your woman put on makeup? Like, honestly, do you think that, do you think that makeup makes her prettier? Or, like, be honest, though. Like, some people, some people, um, you know, say, you know, woman, you, uh, baby, you're pretty either way. But that, that's not always the case. You know it's not. Be honest. Do you like it when your woman put on makeup? Do you prefer makeup? Or do you prefer it just to be, you know, plain and simple, like, like she was born? Or, like, you know, there? Video Technician for the Communication Studies Department. I assist with video and audio productions, as well as repairs. You know, I really enjoyed the Lionel show because it was one of the things I like to do, which is to produce. So when he was here and then able to do everything in a very impromptu and ad lib, I really enjoyed that. Well, mostly he was always very efficient, very on time. He had guests come in all the time. He had... Uh, a lot of imaginative ideas, and he was very ambitious about his project. I see it growing into uh, something with a little better studio, a little better lighting, a little better cameras, and work. You need a staff for that, of course. That works out much better. That's where I see it in five years from now. Just to have well, thank you, Dave. All right. Thank you. Very great journey. In April, I did my first live show for season three and also presented a documentary. 2010 uh, documentary film festival at the University of Detroit Mercy. After reaching 700,000 viewers, another tragic event happened. And this is when I learned the man makes the car, the car doesn't make the man. Listen and find out what happened. I was recently struck by a drunk semi-truck driver. And this is what he left me looking like. I'm not even using this for shame because you know what? After only wearing that brace for about a week, I came out with zero scars and zero injuries. It was it was a Sunday at about 1 o'clock. And I'm sitting at a red light. This dude come flying behind me, smash my Range Rover. And, you know, my Range Rover is not drivable anymore. And... That's not what I'm talking about here. I, I'm just blessed to be alive. So I'm ready to do what God put me on this earth for. I'm ready for season four of The Lionel Show. I'm, I hope y'all are ready. Thank you to everybody who tuned in and gave me all the prayers and things like that. I and after living through all of that, I'm here, ready to celebrate, ready for season four. Are you ready? <laughs> How y'all doing, ladies? <laughs> It's just water, kids. Please do not try this at home. See y'all Tuesday. Each After season four began, I accepted an, an offer to host the first two kickoff shows for the flight tour. Now, the flight tour is about, you know, teaching kids about education and still following your dreams. It was a great tour. And um, shout out to Nikki and uh, Princeton for... Uh, uh, Calling on me to to um, accept this uh, situation right here, but this included included several local but known artists such as you know Stretch Money, um, Princeton, Lady T, and Dollar Jones. Now these this event was great, man. The performances was great. Um, you know, it was it was a blessed opportunity, you know, and, and shout out, man, th these artists work so hard, and I can't wait to see them, you know, on the scale that they need to be on. Um, you know, shout out to Detroit, man, shout out to Detroit artists. Anytime y'all need me, man, just let me know, for real. Uh, I, I just feel like, not just because it's Detroit, but, you know, when you see people that's trying so hard, and just trying so hard, you know what I'm saying, and they don't, and they not getting where they need to be, it's just make you mad, you know, it's like, dang, you know, but, you know, and, and the reality of it is, though, a lot of people, you know, some people, you know, you got to find your path, if you, if you find your path, then you don't have nowhere to go but up, you know what I'm saying, um, it's just, it's like, dang, you know, I, I really, and the kids love, man, Every performance, like the kids, was going crazy. Especially when I was doing my Dougie, <laughs> it was funny too. Uh, shout out to everybody, man. It, it was it was a great, great, great experience, man. Shout out to the dancers too, Princeton dancers. Woo! <laughs>
Um, anyways, man, I'm gonna go ahead, you know. <laughs> Wait, that's what you're watching right now. Thank you so much, and I hope you continue to support. I hope that I've inspired you. So if you have a Facebook status, and you can borrow a camera, good luck. <laughs> God bless you in your future. The Lionel Show is your number one source for real-life situation entertainment. And guess what? Class Quiet 2, coming soon. Let's get This it. is a relaunch of my sophomore DVD, Class Quiet 2. After becoming number six in the world, worldwide, and receiving over 85K viewers worldwide within the first week, it was removed from YouTube. The Lionel Show was founded in 2006 with humble beginnings. In 2007, we went on a promotion spree. We had our name everywhere. In 2008, we created our first YouTube account titled The Lionel Show. We had one previously, but our first YouTube account with The Lionel Show was founded. In 2009, we created a company. TLS Inspired is just a movement in itself. In 2010, The Lionel Show became a TV show. We became, I became the first African American and first student to have a weekly talk show on Titan TV. That was great. Now, in 2011, over a million viewers worldwide. And we also became YouTube partner. And also, we, we dropped our debut DVD in 2012. What do you know? We're dropping our second sophomore DVD. With over 1.1 million viewers worldwide. Fans in over 20 countries. Over 50K viewers on just my debut DVD. Over 17K viewers on just the Class Quiet 2 trailer. The time is now. I'm homeless. This didn't happen to about eight years ago. Had a best friend. We grew up together. We went to the same elementary, middle, and high school, and even college together. He took everything. Guy name was Bruce. We even dated the sisters. And you never know who your real friends are, you know? Me and Bruce, one day we went out to get some drinks, you know? And uh, he was asking all types of weird questions about my security. And I said, yeah, I'm secured, I'm secured. Why you ask, you know? He just said he was thinking about getting him a security system. At this time, I didn't even know he had got put out of his house. The next day, everything was gone. My wife is gone. And everything that I worked hard for, for 20 years, I worked hard for 20 years, it's gone. So I called my wife, no answer, no answer. About two hours later, the wife calls me from a new number and says she's getting a divorce and she's took the kid. So. I'm thinking now my life is over. Well, let me tell you how I lost my job. I began working overtime. One day my boss come in and he said, his daughter is stressing him out. He says, my daughter needs a husband. She keeps finding these people, these dudes who cheated on her. So he says, my daughter needs somebody to take care of her. And, and I'm thinking, okay, do I tell him now? Do I tell him now? Then I eventually said, okay, look man, I'm, in a tight situation myself. I, mean, I just lost everything in my home. I'm just working overtime to try to, you know, get some at least some of my material items back. This is what he tells me. I either take his daughter in or I'll be fired. And I'm thinking, I've worked this hard and I have to take someone's daughter in. Now keep in mind, his daughter is unattractive. Wrong, my wife was beautiful. His daughter wasn't like my wife. He wanted me to take in his daughter 
or I would be fired. I was basically still married. I didn't even get a chance to officially separate from my wife. And I'm thinking, you know, I am single, but I don't want to be pressured into talking to someone who's, you know, already basically miserable. And he's thinking, you know, since I'm working overtime, I got money, I don't take on this new life. And I'm like, well, no, I'm not. So, about a couple days later, he comes in, he says, I see you working a lot of overtime, and you're hardworking, but we're gonna have to let you go. The American dream can only be uh, as much as you make it. Been filling out job applications, trying to get back on my feet. It's really, really hard to find a find a new job, you know, especially especially with this economy. So, you know, um, as of now, I. Uh, you know, hold this up from time to time, trying to get, you know, at least a couple of dollars to give me, you know, something to eat. Uh, it just tells you, man. I, I feel like all of my, all of my rights was, was taken away from me, you know? Um, I didn't do nothing wrong. I even talked to, I even talked to a, a, a lawyer. The lawyer says, you know, he couldn't do nothing because I, I wasn't with a union. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't with a union. Your friends ain't really your real friends. Um, how I went into foreclosure. I, I, I really you know, do what I can to survive, you know. Uh, sometimes it tastes a little tangy, you know. Did everything I could. Maybe God will bless me with, you know. Else. Here we have an innocent man, homeless, because he wouldn't take on the burden of his boss's daughter, a prime example of a human rights violation. Next, we have Adam's ex-best friend. How you doing? So, uh... I'm 53 years old. I got addicted to drugs. You know, I thought it was cool back in my day, about, about eight years ago. I've been clean for eight years. Been in jail for eight years. I don't, I don't think I won't do that no more. Cause, you know, I lost my best friend. Lost my son. Smart little boy. I, I, I miss him. Sometimes I wish I, I wouldn't, have, wouldn't have got addicted to that stuff, you know? The story is, you know, about, about eight years ago, I had a best friend, we went to school together. My friend was a hard worker, man. You know, if I could see him, I would just tell him, I'm sorry, you know, I took everything he had. I was on that stuff. But I'm in this theater program here, and we do it every Thursday from 3 to 6 p.m., you know. I get to perform. I performed all types of characters, you know. I even played a white man. <laughs> you know, hopefully when I get out, Try to change my life around. Uh. All right, let's bring him in. Well, you heard him. That's my time. Do you think Bruce deserves a second chance? Has he learned enough in prison? Next, we have Bruce's son, Charles. Hi. My name is Charles. I'm, I'm 19. Got a full ride to the university, and I'm uh, currently studying theater. I've changed my major three times from architecture, from dentistry, and I also studied business. Uh, I'm happy that I found theater because I get to express myself through characters. I wasn't able to do that in any other field and I needed to get out some of the things from my childhood. And I've been through a lot. 
When I was five, my mom died. When I was 11, my dad went to prison. My mom died of cancer. My dad went to prison because he, he broke into his, his friend's house. My father was on drugs. I knew he was on drugs when he started telling me stuff like, we can't do anything for you this month, son, because I have bills. Or you're gonna have to wear those old shoes because I wasn't able to get you any new ones. My dad would go around, you know, scratching. My professor told me, or he asked everybody to write a, write a one page paper about, you know, something that, that helps you that helps you relieve stress or whatever. And I, you know, decided to go on theater and put myself in the mindset of, you know, what happened with my dad and his best friend. This story changed my life because even though I was young, I was only 11 when he went in. Um, after going to see him a couple of times, I, I, I learned what happened. And it's very, very depressing what substance abuse can do to you. I am uh, in a fraternity. I um, will be graduating in maybe two to three years. My plan is to become a movie star. I want to end with a little bit of a uh, little performance for you all. Ready? Stand. Charles has the potential to go far in life. Because he chose theater as his major, the sky is the limit for this rising star. Next we have Charles' professor, Donald Jackson. Hi, how are you? I am a professor and a philosopher. I teach Introduction to Philosophy. Introduction to Logic. Um, I teach some psychology courses. I teach epistemology once a year. And I'm also uh, working with uh, students who uh, study theater. My specialty is a class in ethics. I teach ethics and I, I really just try to teach kids that Ethics and life is thinking about theater and, and actors. So put yourself in a bunch of different characters and you're playing the roles of life. Just recently I had a student who says his major was theater and his minor was philosophy. And his story really, really touched me so much that I'm doing this interview. I asked the students to write a one page paper. This student, name is Charles, is, is very uh, inspirational how this kid was able to keep going and um, end up getting a full ride to uh, a university. This kid was very strong. It, it takes heart, courage, and, and, and dedication to continue to, you know, strive for better things, even when your parents are gone. Philosopher and professor Donald Jackson also has degrees in theater and business and has given his inspirational student, Charles, a check for $5,000 for whatever he wants to do with it, and as far as college expenses. My name is Professor Donald Jackson, and I was class quiet too. My name is Charles, and I was class quiet too. My name is Bruce, and I am and was class quiet too. My name is Adam, 
And I was class quiet too. Like can I borrow some change? TLS Inspired. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Quiet. In high school, I was nominated for Class Best Dress, Class Brick House, which is Class Body, Class Short, and Class Quiet. I was nominated for all of them, but I won Class Quiet. And I like that. I even named my debut DVD Class Quiet. And that one was a documentary, and we did over... 50,000 worldwide, so I'm proud of that. In 2012, I dropped my sophomore DVD, Class Quiet 2, and this was my acting debut. And I got to showcase monologue skills and some of the characters that can be Class Quiet 2. And that one did over 85,000 in the first week worldwide. Class Quiet 3 is on the way. Debut of the cover of Class Quiet 3. Here it goes. Welcome to Class Quiet 3. This is an interactive DVD. The theme is Ask the Philosopher. But I want to know what you guys think. So my goal is to become the first talk show host to interview himself. Yes, I am. I have my bachelor's degree, and I'm working on my second master's. It'll be seven years, November of 2013. Uh, people say, what is The Lionel Show about? The Lionel Show is a talk show about real-life situations and entertainment. It's not a comedy show. Um, and we just, I simply focus on real-life situations and entertainment, and I mix them. People, I don't do the Lionel show for money, but I will say this, I'm a money magnet, and you will become that as well if you do what you love. When you do what you love, money follows. I don't keep track and try to focus on that too much. I just focus on doing what I love. People ask, what does TLS Inspire mean? TLS Inspire means that you're inspired by the success or the inspirations or the How's everybody doing? Thanks for tuning in to The Lionel Show, your number one source for real life situations and entertainment. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart you've been supporting me. <laughs> Told y'all it's turn up time. Hey, how's everybody doing? Thanks for tuning in to The Lionel Show, your number one source for real life situations and entertainment. It's turn up time. 21 is so special to me because this is the first time I ever got wasted. <laughs> but ask the philosopher. Somebody asked me, how do I feel about friends who play matchmaker? <laughs> I think, personally, if that person didn't tell you to say something to the other person that that person may like, then you shut up, okay? Nobody actually dip in. Now, sometimes it works, like, you know, honestly, but that's only if you know that that person is simply not going to say nothing. If you don't know that person well enough to, say, to know if that person is going to say something or not, then you should just sit back and wait and watch. And if they don't say nothing, it's not your problem, okay? Keep that in mind. At the age of 22, The Lionel Show became a TV show. And I'm so honored for that opportunity. And it's just a, a dream come true to be able to have a, your own talk show become a TV show. Like, that was really big for me. Shout out to everybody over at Titan TV who made that possible. Um, I really appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Now, for Ask the Philosopher, mates who do or cut each other's hair. I think that is a blessing if you are able to actually accommodate each other on hairstyles or hairdos, or even to give your opinion about your mate's hairdo or haircut is always good, you know? Because of course you want to impress your mate more than you want to impress anybody, anybody, right? I mean, of course you want to impress yourself, but you want to impress your mate as well. So, let me give you a little story about uh, the age of 23. At the early age of 23, I had already owned three Mercedes Benz. Now, this is not to brag to, on, brag to you, but to brag upon you, to let you know that if I can do it, you know, at 23, I already had three Mercedes Benz, then I'm sure that you could, you could do it. 
okay? But as a philosopher, having special, somebody asked me about having special ringtones for your mate or your lover or whoever you're dating. I think it's a little cheesy, but I mean, it's, it's unique. I mean, because a lot of people say, you know, someone told me like, okay, I need to have this special ringtone for my boo or my bae or whatever. So I was like, okay, I mean, that's cool. I guess, you know, I can't, you know, I can't knock that. Actually, that's a different type of love, too. It's like, it's a closer love. You've got to really love somebody to actually find a song or ringtone that actually works for that person. I know a lot of people don't even use ringtones anymore, but even if they don't, they still have a special ringtone for that special person. So I think that's pretty cool, honestly. Now, for as the philosopher, newlyweds who do too much, I know everybody knows that newlywed, or not even just the newlywed, but like somebody who's now engaged in every other sentence is, my fiance this, my fiance that. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't want to sound like the bitter person, that's the, the bitter single guy, but I'm just saying, you don't have to, you know, rub it in so much because. Anything can happen when you get a divorce or you're not even, you don't even get married, you know what I'm saying? So be a little more humble about it when you're um, a newlywed or you're just engaged in general because you never know, you know? What if, you're, what if your mate dies? Then, then how do you, you know, you were so happy now, but you know what I mean? So, I mean, that's just real talk. So, but ask the philosopher. Giving your mate a massage. I think this is a great idea, especially after long days of work. When you know your mate just had a long day of work, it's great to do that, something like that. I want to play a color game with you all. I bet you didn't notice that on my last few shows, the letters on my shirt changed from red. I'm just letting you all know that I don't wear the same shirts. I know it's cliche, but sometimes it's important for different bloggers and haters that like to talk about you know, people who just don't have anything else to do but talk about people. Okay. Now for Ask the Philosopher, mates who get matching tattoos. I think that is very cute. And I think it's more subliminal than rings. To be honest with you, like, some people be like, oh, put a ring on it, da 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 No, put a tattoo on it. That's how I feel about it. Bring it closer, baby. That's more like it. Look, Ask the Philosopher, who should wash the dishes? This really depends on who's paying the bill. So, like, in other words, um, you got two mates who are dating. Who should wash the dishes, right? The person who's the, op the person opposite of who's paying the bill. So that, that makes sense. So if you're paying the bills, your mate should wash the dishes. It don't matter if you're a man or you're a woman. What is that? That's how I feel about it. Tell me what you think. I mean, I'm a philosopher, but I don't know everything. Tell me what you think about it. Now, my, ask the philosopher. Shopping for or with your mate. Somebody asked me about this and I said, well, it really just depends. Like, as a man, you don't want to go, you just don't want to go shopping with your woman because it's like, she, it's like females, they take a long time in stores. Like, they look at everything in the store. So it's like, what the heck? But anyways, you know, I don't want to, you know, go hard on females because, you know, I, I, some men shop like women these days, so it's ridiculous. So, anyway, you know, when I find me a woman, then, you know, hopefully we can get something worked out about the shopping situation. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I always say thank you. I don't care how I'm not supposed to or if I'm not supposed to. I'm always going to tell you all thank you because one viewer is just as special as 20 million viewers, okay? Thank you very much for watching my show. But ask the philosopher, claiming your mate on social media. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> so some people, they get on social media and they they become so prone to attention that they forget about their mate. And their mate see that they're, you know, thirsty online. And their mate says, well, what about me? Then when they throw their mate on there, they, they realize they don't get that much attention. It's, oh my God, claiming your mate on social media. Somebody asked me about this. And it's, like, I was like, man, this is about to be a nice topic. Because I'm like, okay, how am I going to explain this? So, my, in my opinion, you know, if you don't have some type of business or anything, you shouldn't be heavy on social media. If you have a mate, honestly, you know, in my opinion, 
like, why, why are you online all the time and you have a mate to occupy? Come on now. And it's, don't say because oh, my mate doesn't have time. No. You make time and your mate will make time as well. Like You, you all have to sacrifice that time. Social media is not really, a, it shouldn't be a place for people who are dating or in a relationship, a deep relationship too. Like, what the heck? Okay, I love you all, love you all so much because you've been sticking with me and you, you've been watching me and motivating me to do this, okay? Gas stations. What was your most awkward encounter at a gas station? I'll tell y'all a little story. So one day, I went to pump gas in my Mercedes truck. I seen a person, a, a, young, a person that looked like they was about my age, ask me, can they pump my gas for some change? Funny thing is, this was one of the dudes that bullied me when I was in middle school, you guys. I was like, wow. <laughs> See how the story, See how the game works, man? When you do wrong, wrong follows. And I was always a good person, and I, you know, when you do good, good follows. However, Unfortunately, I didn't have any change to give him, and I like to pump my own gas. Otherwise, I would I would have let him, you know. But you know, it is what it is. And he remembered me. He said, "How you doing, my now?" I said, "I'm doing good." <laughs> and you know, I asked him how he was doing. He said, "He's doing all right." And it is what it is. Anyways, so tell me what's your most awkward situation with pumping gas, or or just gas station in general. Now, but as a philosopher, some people ask me, "What is my secret to success?" It's just two simple words. A lot of people have a hard time doing this. But my two words are be you. If you be the best you you can be, I'm telling you, that's your, that's your secret to success right there. I mean, as simple as that. Now, if I ask the philosopher, how do I stay so fit? Some people ask me, how do I stay fit? Well, I'll give you a little secret. You know, I've been sharing secrets already. <laughs> Um, but one of my secrets is I actually count my calories. <laughs> I drink a lot of water. And, you know, I, I just try to, you know, do my exercise. I try to run or, you know, I try to do something on a daily that keeps me, you know, uh, keeps my adrenaline going. Okay? Thank you all so much, so much. Listen, I really do appreciate if you just watch one show for one second, okay? It's not about how many people watch it. It's not about none of that. It's, I, I care more about quality than quantity, okay? So whatever, you know, if you even just said you were going to watch the show, I really appreciate it, for real. I'm trying to, I don't want to cry on y'all, so I'm just going to, um, you know. Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? When I bought that Range Rover, they thought it was rented. Then I bought that fourth Benz, they thought it was leased. Then I bought that fifth Benz, hey, the rest in peace. This movie was shot in the year of 2013. Yes, that is my handwriting on the clothing you see in this movie. However, almost went broke with investing in cars and homes. And even investing into my education. But at the end of 2013, I came out on top with a multi-million dollar deal. And I came out with my PhD with an overflow of college credits.